Hi and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to review week 14 to 16 of Herkirat's 0 to 100 cohort. Without wasting much time, let's go on the iPad screen. In week 14, we dived into Next.js. So far, we have learned React and when it comes to React, we know it's just a library. It's not a framework. So we need to do perform routing. We need another library such as React Router. If we need to do something else, then we need another library. But Next.js is a full stack framework. You can write backend, frontend. It has its own routing system and everything. But it's not free like React was. In React, you could do anything. But in Next.js, there are rules. There are certain ways you have to do certain things in order to get certain results. So let's go and see what's there inside Next.js. So one of the important thing that we covered was routing. In React.js, what we used to do was we used to install another package such as React Router to make single page application. But in Next.js, we have routing by default. We don't have to install anything. The framework provides routing to us by itself. And then we covered server side rendering because in React.js, we only had client side rendering. That is uh, the browser used to download all the JavaScript file and then JavaScript used to generate the HTML in the client side. But now in Next.js, we have server side capabilities such that now the HTML part can be generated on the server itself. And then instead of just sending bundles and bundles of JavaScript, it can directly send the HTML to be rendered on your page. And then we have pages and layout. So since I told you that Next.js is not a library, it's a framework. So it comes with its rules. We need to create a page as and name it as page. You can name the component inside it the way you want, but the file name should be a page. And then this is a layout. So if you remember, we used to create a app layout and all. So in React and all, many times I've worked with this thing. Uh, we used to create like something like this. So suppose this is a sidebar and this is a nav bar and this is your main content. And what we used to do is we used to create this as a separate uh, component, this as a separate component, this as a separate component. And then we used to create a separate uh, layout uh, app, app layout component where we used to arrange this component in a particular way. And then this used to be a uh, outlet component. We used to replace this part as an outlet so that whenever a user changes path in the sidebar, the content changes and the outlet used to dynamically replace it. Uh, I'm talking about when I talk about outlet, it used to come from React Router. But here inside Next.js, we have a layout file that comes directly and we can use this layout file whenever we want. It's not compulsory, but we can use it. And then we have client side components and server side components. Client side components are those components that get rendered on the client side less that JavaScript is downloaded and then it runs on the browser and then creates the HTML file for you. And when it comes to server component, the HTML is generated on the server itself. And while you are sending, you don't send JavaScript, but you only send generated HTML. And by default, all the components inside Next.js are server components. If you want to create a client component, then you have to say use client in the start of the file itself. And you'll be saying we have server components and why we will ever use client component. But the thing is, you can't have a static page, right? You need the user to interact with your page and all these on click then managing the state, all these are client side thing. You can't handle this on the server. So whichever is a static content that is not going to change that time you can use a server component. And whenever you require user interactivity, such as click mouse over or hovering, anything like that, then you can use a client component. And then we dived inside backend using Next.js. So we wrote asynchronous components, then API routes and loaders. So for loaders, we used to write set is loading and that. And now in Next.js, what we can do is we can just create a file known as 
loading dot ts or loading dot js and then whenever your state is in loading the what happens is nextjs automatically shows this file and that's so amazing to do before we had to do this on ourselves and now it's different okay but there are rules and we need to follow the rules and this is nextjs for you if you want to know how the app router works then you will have some video popping up somewhere where i've explained the app router and the basics of app page and layout in detail so you can watch that video and in week 15 we explored docker docker is an amazing thing that helps us to create a good application with similar dependencies and everything so in brief if i have to explain you what docker is then docker is kind of like a virtual machine in your machine so what it does it your application is there and your application has a lot of packages and each package of a particular version what docker does it you can pack your application with whatever dependency it requires inside this container okay and then this runs separate on your machine and then it exposes its port and then you can expose its port to one of your machine port and then on this machine port of yours which you exposed it to then you can access your application here so now container is the instance of running image and what is a image image is something that is created by writing a docker file so what is the in docker file in docker file there are commands of how to create a docker image such that you can say like copy the code and then then install all the required dependencies and then start the application okay and once this image run it run it starts a container where your application runs and then you can share this image to all your developers and you can use your application with the same version it's trying to solve the it works on my system i don't know why it's not working on your system and having different dependencies and all and now using this container you are using same versions of all the packages and it is isolated from your system so your system can have other uh, versions of your some packages and you can use it swiftly because this container doesn't interfere with your system packages okay it downloads it and keeps it separate okay we build images from docker file and then when we run a image we get a container and all the images public images for node and all the things are like hosted in docker hub so you can go there and get any image that is publicly available then we explored layers networks and volumes docker compose and build mounts and we explored docker in detail okay so this week was all about docker in week 16 we explored mono repos so mono repos are having all your code inside one repo people like to have everything in one repo itself or it can be like you have multiple repos for multiple things suppose you have multiple application one for your marketing marketing is simple website then one is your application the real app and then you have a, your backend app and uh, in a multi repo thing what you would do is you would store this repo as a separate this repo as a separate and the backend repo as a separate thing but in mono repo we store all the things in one repository okay we manage it as one repository and suppose if you have created packages of your own some ui library of your own to be used inside your company so it uses it the design between your marketing page and your application remain consistent then you might have created a package so instead if we were using all these as a separate repos then what you would have to do is uh, then host this package on npm and then install this package inside your marketing application as well as your main application but since we are using mono repos you can have the package over here inside the repository itself and then directly import it inside your app as well as inside your marketing website you don't have to host it on npm or anything okay and one such tool that we use to manage these mono repos is turbo repo 
it is by Versal and a wonderful tool that helps us to manage all these multiple repos it optimizes if there are changes then it uh, runs it and it tries to cache a lot of stuff because when you are building the project when you are running the project if you are running each and everything then it might be too much so what it does it it caches the things that have been not changed and only the part that has been changed is being executed so just way i said inside apps you put all your application and then we have packages where you put all the packages that are being used by your applications okay so this is turbo repo for you so if you like this video then make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more such informative content and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.